talk about big, shiny 4x4s. Now, they tend to be bought predominantly by people who live in towns, so that when they go to the countryside, they think they'll blend. Really? This is the countryside. It's a brown and gnarled place, much like the people who live in it. And these are the cars that rural people drive. Wellington boots with wheels. Muddy, broken things that are held together with straw and dead pheasants. It's hard to blend here, unless you live here. This is my off-road car. It's a Toyota Land Cruiser Amazon. And it's built to take on Africa and Australia, so it has no problem at all taking my children to school in the morning in Oxfordshire. It has seven seats, rough and tumble fixtures and fittings, and there's a sense of invincibility about it. When you drive this down a narrow road, it's the other guy who backs up. Now, you could use the Land Cruiser for a day's shooting, but I don't recommend it. It's not that it doesn't work off-road, it does, it's brilliant. It just doesn't fit in with the scene somehow. You see, shooting is a traditional sport where the winner gets supper and the loser goes hungry. There's just you and your peace and the stillness of the trees. Smoke curls from an autumnal fire. A gentle rain softens the edges. And in this traditional scene, the Land Cruiser is just too chintzy somehow. I mean, look, that is green, and that's Toyota's idea of green. It just doesn't work. The BMW X5 is also hopeless, but for a different reason. Yes, it's big, and yes, it has four-wheel drive, but that's the end of the story. It doesn't even have off-road tyres, and that's like coming out here in a pair of Jimmy Choo pumps. This car is Milli Vanilli. Looks good on paper, but actually, it's just miming. On even the gentlest of tracks, it gets stuck, and the beater will drive by in his old Land Rover, laughing at you. <laughs> even if you are the Marquis of Blandford. <laughs> and how much is that Land Rover worth? 30 quid? <laughs> OK, now, I'll be fair. £200 worth. And that's, well, £50,000 worth, and it's stuck. That's yes, right. Which is yours? Trooper. Trooper. Trooper come by? Might, yeah. The really strange thing is that Land Rover is exactly the same age as me, and it's the only thing that's got up this. I couldn't get up this hill. It's lasted better than I have. Still went further than the BMW anyway. Yeah, you've beaten the BMW by 30 feet. Oh, wow, that's 30 feet less to walk. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so what about the Jeep Grand Cherokee? Surprisingly, for an American car, it's quite restrained. It does blend into the Oxfordshire backdrop. And it is good at dealing with the rough stuff. But, good though it may be out here, it does have one or two problems. It's quite agricultural feeling. I don't really mind that. I mean, it is an off-road car. What I do mind is the ruching on the leather seats and this hideous, fake plastic wood. It's also nowhere near as big on the inside as you would imagine looking at it from the outside. But the worst thing about this, the worst thing, is that you've always got the sense that you've bought second best.
The new Range Rover is £20,000 more than a Jeep. These days it's more a luxury yacht than a car. But don't worry, it can still play rough. OK, look at this. I flick this switch here to engage the hill descent control, put it into neutral, engage low range, back into drive, and now I just point it at this seemingly impossible slope here. <laughs> and now I'm going to do something you might think is mad. I'm going to take my foot off the brake. OK? That's astonishing. I can feel the anti-lock brakes grabbing each of the wheels in turn, making sure that we stay straight and that we continue to do a walking pace all the way down the hill. Now, of course, the X5 can do that as well. The X5 also has a hill descent control. It's something BMW stole while they were running Rover. But what the X5 can't do is turn around and go back up the slope. See, it doesn't have a low range gearbox. It doesn't have locking diffs. It doesn't have this thing's ground clearance or wheel articulation. It's not a proper off-road car. And this just is. There's something else too. A Range Rover looks good outside the Savoy, but it looks even better out here. Now, there was a time when Range Rovers were king off the road, and they still have an air of invincibility about them. But believe me, you can still get these things stuck. Really stuck. See what I mean? First to try and get it going was Lord Blamford. Well, it was his garden. He, however, made things worse, so next to try was one of the locals. But his pickup ended up in the lake. I then decided to fetch my Land Cruiser, but in my haste to get there, I skidded off the track and ended up in a wood. The thing is, if those saplings hadn't have been there, I would be very, very wet. Well, so how do we get it out? Anyone got any thoughts? Why are you laughing at me? What did you say to me this morning? This truck goes anywhere, you said. It does go anywhere. Look, it's come here. While we took a chainsaw to the trees that were holding the Toyota in place, a tractor turned up to get the Range Rover out. But even that was having problems. This is the trouble with filming in the countryside. There's too much mud in it. Eventually, though, all the cars were freed and we could get back to the business of explaining why the Range Rover is so good. Look at this, great slabs of real sturdy timber here and here and down the sides and hand-stitched leather and this foundry finish. It's the best interior on any car anywhere ever, easily. It's like being in the middle of a field in a trendy restaurant in Notting Hill. Except here, of course, the, the produce is fresher. So, there we are. If you really want to get about off-road, get something old and knackered with narrow, knobbly tyres. If, however, you want something for the weekend, all the cars are equal. But one is more equal than the others. So the only car not to get stuck there, then, was the Jeep? No, no, it got stuck as well. Well, we didn't see it. No, because the cameraman was driving it when it got stuck. Yeah, that, <laughs> that would have done it. Yeah. So the Range Rover emerged, you reckon, as the best of all of those, despite yeah. being, what, 20 grand more than the Jeep? Yes, I know, but the attention to detail on this thing is just amazing. Let me, um, let me show you, OK? The steering wheel, OK? It's heated. You push that button there and it warms up. And, even better, there's a little paraffin heater down in one of the front wheel arches, OK? And you can program it on the computer here to come on, say, at 6 o'clock, if you're leaving for work at 7. So when you get in, it's nice and warm in here. And, and I fear this may be the most boring sentence ever to be said on British television, but it used to have a separate chassis 
No, it's a monocoque. Yeah, and you know exactly what that means, I presume. It means it's less wobbly. OK, but all this clever stuff, that's great, assuming it works, because Range Rovers have not enjoyed the best of reputations. I did some phoning yeah. around and looked into this. They did suffer a few problems. I mean, it was with stuff like the paintwork, mm. um, interior trim, mm. a bit rattly, yeah. engines, they could be a problem. Yeah, the 4-litre. And the 4.6. And the diesel. All the engines. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> gearboxes could be an issue. Automatics. And the manuals. And the manuals. Yeah. Uh, transfer boxes. Yeah. The suspension, actually, as well. Yeah. And all of the electronics. Yeah. All of it, you know. Yeah. Um, I did actually have a word with Land Rover about their reliability issue on this car. And they said, no, 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 this one's built properly. So I said, OK, right, lend us one for six months. And they've agreed. And if anything falls off, or melts, or breaks, in any way, we can murder the managing director's dog. That's fair. In front of his children. That's so fair. No, really, if this, for instance, gets a little bit loose, a little bit wobbly, Frisky buys the farm. 